neural physics represents the most advanced, mysterious, and consequential science in the Halo universe. It's not simply a form of hyper-technology or an advanced field of physics, it is the operating principle of reality itself, sitting just above the foundational substrate of existence. It was mastered by the precursors, feared by the forerunners, misunderstood by humanity, and ultimately corrupted through the Flood. In this second episode of the Halo Cosmology Project, we deep dive into neural physics, its emergence from the source field, and its role as the blueprint layer of existence. Hey everyone, welcome back to Installation 00, and this is part two of a six-part series, The Grand Unified Theory of Halo Cosmology, a series dedicated to exploring the key foundational elements of the Halo universe to effectively bring forward a Halo theory of everything. In the first video, linked up above and in the description down below, and in the top pinned comment, we explored the cosmological layer model basically the foundational framework of the Halo universe. I strongly recommend that you go and watch that video before watching this one if you haven't already, but I will very briefly outline the cosmological layer model. Layer zero is the absolute foundational base of the Halo universe. In this layer, all of the fundamental forces of the Halo universe have been quantized. They all have their respective force-carrying particles, and as such acts as the unified elementary base of the universe where the potential energy of existence resides. Layer 1, built directly upon the source field, is the neural physical layer. We will dive into the specifics of this in today's video. Built on top of this in layer 2 is the dimensional control layer. This is effectively the hyperdimensional reality of the universe. All respective dimensions and realms exist in this dimensional control layer including, but not limited to, the dimension of time, the three dimensions that we experience as space, as well as slip space, and other hyperdimensional realms, such as denial of locale, the natal void, shun space, trick geodetics, and the glow. Nested on top of and within this is layer three, the conventional physical universe we are familiar with, and nested on top and within this is layer four, the synthetic subsystems, basically the informational realm of reality within computational systems across the universe. We'd liken that to being the virtual space of, say, the internet. We will cover all of these layers before finally wrapping up the halo theory of everything, but today we're dealing with neural physics. Neural physics exists at layer 1, sitting directly atop the source field at layer 0, which contains the raw energy, quantum fluctuations and abstract rules of possibility that underpin existence. Neural physics translates these into programmable manifest patterns. Space, time, consciousness, causality, and entropy are not fixed constants, but fluid phenomena that can be altered or refined. Neural physics seems to suggest that all of reality is composed of neural patterns. These are not brain waves or synaptic pulses, they are informational matrices that define the behavior of fundamental forces. Neural physics allows the manipulation of consciousness as a field, the encoding of life as a function of informational resonance, the alteration of physical laws through ontological rewriting, and the redefinition of causality, time flow, and memory. At the neural physical layer will is an operative property. Precursor science implies that consciousness is not emergent from biology, but is a first order function of reality that can shape neural patterns directly. The precursors did not build machines to affect reality. They thought, and it was so. This is the basis of living time. Time is not linear, but relational to intention and pattern, causality becomes local, mutable, and non-directional. Due to the nature of neural physics as a function of the universe itself as opposed to a form of technology, 
entities encoded at layer 1 are substrate independent. That means that a being who is encoded within layer 1 can persist as information even after physical death. Consciousness can reinstantiate in different forms. This is why precursors didn't particularly fight back to the forerunners when they were attacked. The destruction and death of their physical bodies didn't mean anything to them, because they existed and were encoded at layer 1 within neural physics. And because consciousness can reinstantiate in different forms, and it is ultimately the manipulation of consciousness as a field, and can alter physical laws through ontological rewriting, the precursors could simply will themselves back into existence in whatever form they so chose. This also explains why the precursors could exist in myriad forms, they didn't have a single physical form that defined their species. If anything, their species were so intertwined with neural physics that the precursors nearly became at one with the universe. And it is through this mechanism that constructs such as the domain can not only preserve minds across incredible spans of time, but seemingly contains hundreds of billions of years worth of information. The neural physical layer makes time immutable. The age of the universe, at least in the Halo universe, is assumed to be the same as our real world universe, being around 13.4 billion years. The domain containing information that spans hundreds of billions of years seems to suggest that the domain existed outside of the boundaries of our normal universe, and thus somehow collated information from other universes, but once you understand the function of the neural physical layer of Halo's cosmology, and the fact that time is immutable, suddenly a hundred billion years of information existing within a construct that could have only existed as long as 13.4 billion years is actually because time within the neural physical layer is not linear and can be relational and intentional to pattern. Time becomes non-directional, meaning that experiences happening within the universe aren't bound by time and that the measurement of a hundred billion years worth of information is simply based on the perspective of which it's being observed, which in this specific instance is being observed by the forerunners, a species who don't exist at the neural physical layer, but in the normal dimensions of space-time, and thus interpret the flow of time linearly. It also explains a great deal more further than this, but I'm going to save those for the subsequent videos to really fully flesh out and reveal how this theory really does link everything together. But at the crux of it, particularly from a normal living creature's perspective, one that's not at one with layer one and encoded within the neural physical layer, it allows for informational immortality. What seems like magic, prophecy, resurrection, or omniscient is simply high order manipulation of level one patterns. Divine behaviour is just the expression of neural mastery. The domain is a neural archive, not a mythic afterlife, as the foreigners have interpreted it. The grave mind is not a soul, it is a pattern that persists. The precursors are the true masters of neural physics, and the precursors did not use neural physics as a tool, they were woven into it. Their architecture, biology, thought structures, and memory systems all operated on the same foundational principles. Their minds spanned across time. They would create life forms by rewriting the substrate patterns. They embedded messages, sentience, and intent into the structure of space. They were gods not because they defied physics, but because they defined it. And although we have key references back to neural physical structures within the Forerunner trilogy of books, most of this is still proved within the boundaries of the single construct that still exists in the Halo universe that is neural physical in nature. The Domain. The Forerunners believed the Domain was a spiritual plane, almost. It was in truth a persistent neural substrate, an echo of precursor informational architecture a living database where consciousness and memory are stored as pattern continuity. When the domain faltered, foreigners went mad because the neural coherence of their civilization collapsed. 
Neural physics is not the apex of science in Halo, it is the hidden lattice on which the universe is constructed. It resolves every major metaphysical question. Why do souls persist after composition? Here in our real world, we are still struggling with the nature of consciousness. Science cannot come to terms or agree on where the origin of consciousness is. Is it simply the consequence of complex biology? It simply emerges from the complexity of our neural network within our brains? Or is it something more metaphysical? Is it more intrinsic to the universe? And thus, when we put the body through processes like teleportation, where it is broken down at the atomic level at one end and reconstructed at the other, does the consciousness transfer with it? Or is it destroyed and simply a one-to-one -one recreation is made at the other end? At the instance of death, does consciousness merely wink out of existence? Or does it go back to the source, so to speak? This is a difficult problem that science struggles with to this day. Obviously, we've had people flatline on operating tables and have been clinically dead for prolonged periods, but have come back. But that hasn't truly been a brain death, a consciousness or ego death. It has been a physical death, but the brain has been protected from injury and the person has been managed to be stabilized and revived thereafter. But we also have brain dead patients whom are physically fully alive, but have no higher conscious brain function. Is that merely that the body was damaged enough that consciousness could no longer exist within the brain? Or is it that the consciousness simply left the brain and didn't return? And even so far as to the existence of cryogenics in our real world right now, there are people who froze themselves at the instant of their death due to diseases that were uncurable in our time in the hopes that they could be revived in the future and then cured. On the assumption we're even able to revive them and cure them of that illness, because again, that isn't guaranteed, if they are cured and revived, will they be conscious again? Or is the process of death and then prolonged freezing allowed the consciousness to leave the body and return to the source, meaning that when they are revived, it is an empty vessel, another brain-dead patient? These are answers we're going to have to find in our real world, in our real science, but in the Halo universe, it is highly evident that souls persist. An individual can be composed and still maintain a degree of self-awareness after composition. This is demonstrable by the fact that the Lord of Admirals and other ancient humans, the Didact and millions of other forerunners have experienced consciousness persistence after being composed and merged with the domain. But it is also demonstrable in the normal physical universe, such as the case of 343 Guilty Spark. The ancient human Chacus was composed and then implanted into a monitor carapace to become 343 Guilty Spark. Yet the consciousness, the ego of Chacus, persists. An ancient human who has existed across millennia and continues to exist to this very day. Neural physics, the broader cosmological layer model, and this theory of everything explains how time can be changed and warped and manipulated. It explains what the domain is. It also explains why the Flood keep coming back, and why the foreigners failed. Neural physics is not magic, it is the operating system of existence. And in the next episode, we'll explore how the foreigners, unable to grasp neural physics, built a universe of firewalls to contain what they could not understand, and will continue to build on the grand unified theory of Halo cosmology. So until next time... Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, kindly tap that like button, and if you're not already subscribed and want to see more stuff like this, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss future uploads. Pop a comment down below telling me what you thought of today's video, or if you want me to cover something specific in the near future. I want to take this opportunity to thank and give shout outs to my patrons and YouTube supporters. Spartan10148, my singular contender class Ancilla. The triumvirate of minds within my installations Metarch, Falcon, Jordan and Poseidon. My seven installation monitors, Sylphia, Ashley, Esoteric, Spartan1029, Chris, Orion and Shane. 
The Crush of Submonitors, Legion, Ryan, Lebrat, Spartan 0137, Element 0, J3, Cult, Evermorse, Personal Devil, Sion Esports, Phantasma, Ashton, and 191 Shaken Lightbulb, my fleet of Strato Sentinels, my most loyal of enforcers, and every single one of the awesome people supporting the channel over on Patreon, my Tier 0 Transcendent YouTube members, Spartan 137, again, Mori, Jimbo, and Balaz, and all other YouTube members keeping my installation functional on that glorious vacuum energy. I cannot thank you all enough. Shout out to John because... And if you like what I'm doing here, consider supporting the channel on one of the support links in the description to net yourself some tasty merch and help keep the channel going. Take it easy everyone, and find peace in the domain.